The Hollywood sign, situated on Mount Lee in the hills above Los Angeles, is one of the world's most famous cultural emblems. The original was created nearly a hundred years ago as an advertisement for a local real estate development, and it actually read Hollywood Land. But by 1978, the letters, each nearly 50 foot tall, had deteriorated, and there was a campaign to replace the sign with a more permanent structure, which is the one that you can see today. But what happened to those original letters? The sculptor and memorabilia collector Bill Mack fills us in. The Hollywood sign was originally built in 1923. Mack Sennett, one of the earliest producers of movies in California, he decided to build a housing development called Hollywood Land. He said, we'd better put up a big sign up in the hill there and to attract attention. But they asked him how big, and he said, we'll make it 50 feet tall. It's only going to be up there a year or so. And it lasted uh, beyond the Hollywood Land development, and they just left it in the hills. The last four letters fell over, and the word Hollywood was left up there. I think as the movie industry grew up around it, it became known as Hollywood, essentially because of the sign. It's the beginning that identified the movie industry, and really the word for dreams. Welcome to Hollywood. What's your dream? Everybody comes here. This is Hollywood, land of dreams. Some dreams come true, some don't. By 1977, it was Alice Cooper that was driving by one day and saw the, the last O when the word Hollywood had fallen over. And he said, what are you going to do? And I said, well, we're trying to raise some funds to replace it. So he committed to paying for that O, dedicating it to Groucho Marx. And he had a press conference where he took an O off his sweatshirt. And he said, and I'll be Alice Copper until my buddies step up and pay for the rest of the letters. And sure enough, uh, Warner Brothers Studios, Gene Autry, Andy Williams, I think, bought the W. You're just too good to be true. Take my eyes off. Uh, I can thank all those people for paying for the new letters rather than restoring the old sign because that great old metal that had been there from 1923 for those 55 years was put in storage. There's nothing else, just us and the cameras and those wonderful people out there in the dark. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. I'm a sculptor in the first place, and I collect things, not strictly a Hollywood memorabilia, but I collect a great deal of that. So get a call. Bill, we got uh, someone on the phone that wants to know if you want to buy the Hollywood sign. <laughs> you know, same reaction anybody would get. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is clearly the holy grail of collecting Hollywood memorabilia. There can be nothing greater than the Hollywood sign, the original Hollywood sign. Out where they say, let us be gay. I'm going Hollywood. When we received it, I had to go and rent a 53-foot truck and load it up with metal. I was hands-on this whole thing, cut my hands, and it was all nasty and dirty. And we got it to Minneapolis, where my studio is, and we did as much flattening and restoration as we could there. And when I started, the idea was to cut the metal into whatever size, let's just say two feet by three feet, to paint a portrait of Marilyn Monroe or Frank Sinatra. There's a letter H. <laughs> That's H. But we decided then that we'll uh, restore that H. Well, we still can because the H was the most important letter because it was obviously the first letter. And it was also the one that people were most photographed by. It was the one that was most accessible when you went up there. You know the Hollywood sign. Restoring that age, it, it just fit into the art world. You could call it an installation. It has to be the most significant, important artifact in all of Hollywood history. I mean, it, it was there before there was a movie industry. The original Hollywood sign was the one that Marilyn Monroe saw, James Dean, the, the people that were there during the golden years. So this metal has got their DNA on it. The deedly, deedly, deedly dum. Boop, boop, be doop. Once we had committed to building it, we built it to tour. To bring it to someplace like London and bring it to Sydney and bring it to Greece and put it next to the Acropolis. Hooray for Hollywood, that pony super pony Hollywood. Perhaps you'll be another pop. This will be the first time that anybody's seen it outside, off that hill, actually. When it was in my studio, I built it, nobody really saw it. So this will be the official first time that anybody's seen it since it was in L.A. Hooray for Hollywood. 
We basically build the H on the ground and then lift it with a crane. Maybe three days to get it up and two days to take it down. And uh, it'll travel with the museum, with the Hollywood artifacts. There'll be a gallery so we can show some of the art. But the H at 50 feet tall, here we've got this gigantic white flat area. We'll use it like it's a movie screen, a gigantic movie screen. It'll be projected with 3D mapping. We can make the H jump. We can make it turn somersaults. We can make it disappear. We can turn it into a 50-foot tall face of Marilyn Monroe. Bill Mack. You must have a very big studio to get those letters in. And that famous H on the Hollywood sign can be seen as part of the Heart of Hollywood exhibition, which premieres at the O2 in London in June and then goes to Manchester, Liverpool and Edinburgh.